Okay, sweet ladies, we're going to get started in about five minutes. So if you want to go to the bathroom or grab something real quick, uh, please do. And, um, and we're going to start worship in about five minutes, okay? All righty. You tell us when it happens, okay? Just point. Well, good morning, ladies of grace. 
It is so nice to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. Yes. So I want you to sit back, relax, be comfortable with your Jesus. If you're watching from your home this morning, sit back, relax, be comfortable with your Jesus. And my special friend, Ashley, is going to lead us in worship. This is Ashley's first time to uh, do worship this year. So she's going to have the anointing of the first on her this, this morning as she leads us into to God's presence. And we're just so excited she's here. So prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, and um, let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that all, everything has already been laid out and prepared. Lord, we have did our work, and Lord, we're expecting you to show up. So, Father God, we thank you. Be honored in your house today, Lord, in all we do and in this worship. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, ladies of living grace, let's get ready to worship our king. Feel free to stand to your feet or stay seated. It's up to you. We know in your hearts that we just thank you, Lord, and we take this time to lift up our voices to the one and only creator of this world, and he has taken care of us so good. Despite what's happened in the last couple years, he is a good God. All of us have stories of how hard life's been, and maybe the devil has had us confused as to what God could be doing, but we knew he was rolling up his sleeves, and he was ready to prepare each plan for each one of us because he loves us so, so, so much. And in Jesus' name, here we go. Surround us, God.
sneak up on the enemy. This is how. Sneak up on him. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how. Here we go. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Sing it like you know it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, come on. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Sing it, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded. Yes, we know that when the enemy comes close, we just pull Jesus in closer because that's how we see his truth. That's how we see through darkness is his light. Sometimes, though, even when the light's not bright, he has to crush us into a fine powder. And sometimes we feel like he's forgotten about us in that powder form, right? through death and sickness, losing our jobs, friends disappoint us, but we know that he is the winemaker, and he makes new wine from that powder, so we praise him. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making You are 
Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that you always show up for us, God. You're never late. You're always on time. Always, God. I know there's so many women in this room that maybe thought God was late. I was one of them. I was probably the worst of all, but he always shows up. Just know that if you're in the room tonight and you just feel like he forgot your name, he did not. And even if in our heads the devil tells us he forgot our name, we remember his name. It's about his name, not ours. It's about his name. We praise you, Lord. Think of all the times that we don't even know, but there's a million little miracles that he's doing in your life right now that are all leading up to his plan. So let us count them or try to if that's possible. Just take yourself to a place where you can look back at your life and say, that was God. I didn't know it then. Oh, my life I've been carried by grace. Don't ask me how, cause I can't explain. It's nothing short of a miracle I'm here. We all shouldn't be here at some point in our life. I've got some blessings that I don't deserve. I've got some scars, but that's how you learn. It's nothing short of a miracle we're comes from above cause I have miracles on miracles a million little miracles yeah. miracles on miracles count as miracles one, two, three, four I can't even count them all not enough time in the day not enough fingers on your hands so many miracles don't let the devil convince you that they aren't there. You held me steady so I wouldn't give up. You opened doors that nobody could shut. I hope I never get over what you've done. Never. I'll never get over it. I 
wanna live with an open heart, yeah. I wanna live like I know who you are. I hope I never get over what you've done. It's not coincidence and it's not luck, no. I know it comes from the your miracles right what a blessing Ashley thank you sister for being obedient to the Lord we're gonna have Sharina Donovan run up here real quick 
And Come on, um, Sharina. This is my girl right here. She's part of my leadership team. And, and everything you see here, all the beauty and all the food, that was put together by my leadership team, too. And just give them a hand real quick, OK? Yes, 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 yes. So we are so excited. We've got a new blog coming out for you guys watching at home and for all the ladies here. I'm going to let Sharina, this is what this is on your table, the little bookmark. I'm going to let Sharina tell you about that. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. So we have been putting out a word of encouragement since last year. We started about March. And we wanted a way for you to be able to see the, all the blogs that we have done. Uh, there's about eight or nine of them from last year, and we started them this year as well. And so we thought a, a great way for you to be able to have access to that and to know what events are coming up and everything that's coming up for the Ladies of Grace, that we would start a blog. It will be uh, ladiesofgrace.blog. And if you go there now, it will say coming soon. Because it will be available March 1st, 2022, with Paulette as the latest update for March for a blog. So <laughs> our blogs are either written by the leadership team or they're videos by the leadership team of what God is showing them that month that they want to encourage the ladies of grace to follow after Christ and to live in him. And so with that, that is just one part of way, how we are trying to get the word out. And we also updated our Facebook account. You'll, be able, you'll see that we're going to start updating pictures. We uh, have an Instagram account. We have a Twitter account. So if you are on any of those social media platforms, please like us. Uh, please subscribe or whatever, however you do that. I forget how you friend, whatever it's called. <laughs> um, but please do that. And if you could put it up, I know it's hard to read. Uh, sorry, back there. Hello, back there. Could yeah. you guys put up the... Like <laughs> Hi, guys. Back there. You're still... Hello. Can you hear me? They are like, no idea what... Hello. Yes, you guys. Could Can you, you guys put up the... Um, the, the <laughs> please. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> She's getting a head shake back uh, there. So this will tell you. I'm so sorry. I did it in pink, not thinking. Oh, the, no, that's the retreat. No, for the blog. It has the flowers. Yes, this is it. So what Woo! it says is our Facebook account is Ladies of Grace LV. Our Twitter account is Ladies uh, down slash four. And our Twitter, our Instagram is Ladies of Grace four square. And we are asking that if you take pictures today at this event or any events, if you could hashtag Ladies of Grace Foursquare so that we can keep posting new photos. We really want to be able to have a community of ladies. This is about Ladies of Grace. Amen. And we also will be putting out a word of encouragement as just small little things throughout. Uh, it'll be every couple days on our Instagram, our Twitter, and our Facebook account of what God is showing the leadership team. Um, because we, own, we have Konania like three times a month or a year, I mean. And we want to be able to have more access and have more conversations about what God is doing in your lives and what he's showing us in our lives. And so as we post those things, please comment. Please share. Please tell us what God is doing in your life. This is a time for us to use these platforms to further the kingdom. Amen. So please... Yeah. Uh, Follow us, do all of those things, and if you take pictures today, hashtag Ladies of Grace Foursquare. Thank you. Well said, Sharina, and thank you for all of your hard work. You are going to be so excited when you see it. Remember March 1st. Some of the information is on your bookmark, and it's going to be, as she said, really interactive. Like, we're going to ask you questions. Has this happened to you? And there's going to be a space for you to respond, and we can all connect. So we want all of our ladies to be part. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so exciting. now I just wanted to talk to you, and all of our ladies at home be part too. Amen? So I just wanted to tell you about a few other things that are coming. The retreat, the essential retreat is coming. Woo! Woo! Now you guys can put that, that one up for me if you don't mind. And um, it's going to be in uh, California, in Rancho Santa Margarita. Is that, yeah. that that's how you say that? Yep, you got it. And um, it is April the 29th and 30th. We want to already tell you about this one because if you go online and buy your ticket now, 
you can get it for $89 if you buy it before March the 31st. So heads up, ladies, the retreat is coming. It's gonna be in California, and it's gonna be April the 29th through the 30th, a Friday and Saturday, amen? Get that $89 ticket. Online, get that $89 ticket before March the 31st. Amen. 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 So another thing that we're having here that we want to share that we're excited about, right, is a gift seminar. Yes. And um, woo! now who is taking the gift seminar before? Well, come take it again. Because yeah. who knows that God has yearly cycles. And every year, he will show you something you did not know about your identity in him. Amen? And if you've never taken it, 100% for sure, come, come do it. And it is March the 25th and the 26th, which is a Friday and a Saturday, right? That's right. Sister Fox. Friday night and all day Saturday. So mark off your calendars. And it, it will go fast and it will be worth it. It's so, yes. it's, it's life-changing. It's life-changing. Yes. First of all, I just want to say I am so grateful and thankful to be sitting here by this sweet, Aww. sweet lady. For all of you out there and in here that don't know, this is our um, pastor's <clears throat> wife. She's a pastor, I believe, in her own right. Amen. And um, we just love Sister Fox. Yeah. I, I hadn't rather sit here with anybody than you. Aww. So um, I just wanted to, to share that because identity is so important when you know who you were created to be. And you learn to love that, right? So that gift seminar is right on time. And I want to share with you just a little bit about how God's timing is perfect before Amen. we get started. Is that okay? okay? Yeah. Okay, so who knows Monday is Valentine's Day, right? Yeah. Valentine's Day. And we all celebrate it. And we buy things with a little naked Cupid running around with a little pamper <laughs> and a bow and arrow. We don't got no problem with it, right? We just, oh, we love it. It's Valentine's Day. We're going to show love. But I want to tell you real briefly whose idea it was before Cupid showed up. Because who knows that the world steals from God. Amen? Amen? So now, for you guys that don't know, we're in the Hebrew month of Adar. And every he Hebrew month, now, now real quick, I know I don't have to say this, but everybody in here and watching at home, you know Jesus was Jewish, right? I just want to make sure everybody knows that. Or, you know, some people call him Hebrew, but, you know, or is the Israelite, but all three of those mean the same thing. So he more than likely followed this calendar, and that's the reason I bring it up, because in God's Hebrew calendar, this month is the month of Adar. And I just want to tell you, we're not in a month with one day for showing love. We're in a month for the whole month. Because um, it is associated, and it was God's plan first. See, I want each and every one of you here to know this is God's set-apart time. To, and it's known for this. Um, the month of Adar means strength, mm -hmm. and it's associated with the tribe of Naphtali, or Naphtali. And that tribe represents his sweetness to me. So this whole month... Mm -hmm. Um, represents his sweetness to you. We just have to receive, receive it, right? Just to meditate on it. And how they came about getting that was, um, first of all, in Deuteronomy 33, 23, if you guys want to put that scripture up for me, Deuteronomy 33, 23, this was what, how Moses blessed the tribe of Naphtali. This is what he said over him. He said, Moses said this about the tribe of Naphtali. Oh, Naphtali, you are rich in favor and full mm. of the Lord's blessings. May you mm. possess the west and the south. And just so you will know, the west and the south was some of the prime land. So the Lord, Moses spoke the Lord's blessing over them. You are rich in favor. You're satisfied by the Lord's goodness and full of the Lord's blessings. So, see, the month represents all that sweetness to me, to you personally, to them. And because it's the tribe that's associated with the month, this is what's poured out this year. So, it's also um, Nap Naphtali. I want to make sure I say it right. Naphtali, or Naphtali, you can say it both ways, okay. um, means to wrestle. Because Rebecca, this was a child born from 
Rebecca's maid servant, hmm. and she said that she had wrestled um, and won over her sister because it was her second child. Amen? So, but it don't mean in Hebrew, everything means more. So it don't mean just to wrestle, but listen now, let this go down deep for this month. It don't mean to wrestle, but it means to conquer and to win the victory. Amen. 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 So this is a month to just proclaim and sit in the presence of the Lord, knowing that he's going to pour his sweetness out on you. And what you've been wrestling with is going to be conquered and you're going to gain the victory. Amen. <laughs> Proclaim that out of your, out your mouth. And that is his sweetness that was poured out on this tribe. Uh, during this month is when Esther's story happened. During this month, what we just heard is when Rachel's second son was born and she was, you know, late in having children. And so it was a blessing to her. So it's a time to remember that whatever you've been wrestling with, it can be sweet again. Mm, right? Amen. And it's also, because of that, a month of great joy. And guess what else? Identity. That's why we're right on time with that gift seminar, right? That's it. So it's a time when God wants to speak amen. into you. Um, more things that you do not know about your spiritual identity. So, take time. Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, the identity part, I just had to tell this part because it's really the month that God says it's time to take your mask off. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> See, we're in God's timing. Did you hear that at home? God says, quit masquerading. Stop pretending you're somebody else. Walk in your own identity because this month is the time to take <laughs> the mask off. Amen? So now, cool. I'm going to just say a prayer over you. Father God, may mm -hmm. we receive this month um, mm -hmm. as a whole month of your sweetness to us. Yes, sir. That, Lord, we would let you give us a plan and how we can defeat our enemies mm -hmm. and be victorious, mm -hmm. conquer them, and have the victory in you. Mm -hmm. And fill us with your joy. Fill us with your sweetness, mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. And show mm -hmm. us our identity. Lord, we receive your sweetness unto us mm -hmm. this Thank month. You. In Jesus' Thank name. You. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So now, ladies, we're not just celebrating his love one day this month. We're celebrating the whole month God set aside to pour his love on us. So happy God's month of love. And for that, you're welcome. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so. Now, now, isn't this the year of the leap year? So it's oh, actually yes. a double. Yes. Yes. It's a leap year. Uh, in the they Hebrew calendar. This month, a dar to do their leap year. So, double portion. If they're, they're going to be a double month, then we're getting double joy, double victory, um, double revelation in our identity, double sweetness. And we're going to take it, right? We're going to pull it down from heaven. So, when you're celebrating Valentine's Day, remember who really started that. Amen? Okay. <laughs> So, sweet, sweet ladies, we got a lot to talk about. So today, we're going to talk about the peace we have in Christ Jesus. Now, who knows the whole world's searching for peace, right? With everything that's yeah, going on, yeah, yes. you know, all of these bouts of COVID, um, vaccinated, unvaccinated, such a time and loss of life, right? Mm -hmm. All the, 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 the sadness, the uncertainty. Um, what else? Um, the war, Russia. Yeah, What's going rumors on? A lot of, of wars, mm -hmm. natural disasters, disasters, all kinds of things going on. So everybody is searching for peace, right? Everybody. And, and you can tell that because next time you're in a grocery store and you're looking at the magazines, just look at some of the, the headlines that will be on it. They're all about peace right now. The world is searching for peace. And I happened to be at the hairdresser, and I seen a magazine, a Vogue magazine. I never read it, but it caught my attention because it said, um, it had an article in it called A Separate Peace. Now, isn't this the way the world tries to do it? You know, and what, what that was all about is they had Sarah Jessica Parker on the front, and she was in this beautiful dress, and, and they asked all these rich and famous people, tell us, how do you find peace? What is your way to find mm. peace, right? But hey, 
Who in here knows that the kind of peace we have passes all human understanding? Amen? Uh, no human can come up and say, oh, this is how. And they did. They had little ideas. They, um, you know, one said, oh, let the sun shine in. And one said, slow down. Go another slower pace, you know. Mm -hmm. So, But it doesn't surprise us that mm -hmm. they're looking for peace because mm -hmm. in the church, the word peace for 2022 is a resounding voice. So many people I talk to, and maybe you at home have even gotten it. So many people I've talked to have been hearing God say, this year, 2022, he would give us peace. Amen. And, um, and why is that? Why is that? Because he gives to us what the world is looking for. So we can bring it to them and minister his heart to them, right? So whatever the world is going to be searching for, you better rest assured the Lord is going to equip his body to give it to him. Amen? That's good. So I just wanted to show you, and, and Sharina was so sweet to do this for me this morning. But imagine this. See, we're a magazine. We're, you're a magazine. We're magazines that people would read. And you should be showing God's peace more than anybody. You should be showing his joy. You should be showing his strength and his victory so much. Somebody would say, oh, I, I want to buy that magazine. How much is that one? Pick, let me pick that up. So can you put, this is what we should be seeing in the grocery store oh. line right here. Okay? Look at her. Okay. She's famous. Enter into the sweetness of the month of Adar. <laughs> I can't read some of them, but basically, how I walk in peace with my Jesus. <laughs> and, and the big caption says, my wonderful life in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So see, we should be the magazine. Remember that. We should be the magazine people want to pick up and read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So the focus for women's ministry this year will be on two main things. We're keeping it real simple. We're stripping it down. We're going to say it over and over and over. Because guess what? We want it in you. We want it living in you. We want it breathing out of you. We want you to know in all circumstances, wherever you are, these things, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to do this year. We're going to secure what we know. No, we don't have to go searching for peace like the world. So the two things are, we're going to concentrate on the peace we receive from living in God's word. The peace we receive from living in God's word. And who knows that when you're in God's word, you're in Jesus because he was the word made flesh. Amen? Yes, he was. Amen. And the second thing, and I want you to really hear what I'm saying because the church don't really teach a lot on this, but women's ministry is going to focus on this. And it's the peace in learning to love who God created you to be. Who, the, for me, it would be the peace in learning to love who God created me to be. See, he wants you to learn to love who he created you to be. Amen? Amen. And we call, we're calling it healthy. Everybody say healthy. Healthy. Self-love. Because who knows? God tells us first to love him with all our hearts, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. Then to love our neighbor as, and everybody say it. As we love ourselves. Amen. Amen. So if you don't love who God created you to be, how can you mm. tell somebody else about that love and what, how he, what he created them to be? Amen? Mm -hmm. So we're going to learn to, um, we're going to press into learning, loving, and owning our own identity and purpose in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And maybe you've never been mm -hmm. taught to love yourself, but God wants you to love what he made in you. Amen. And in you watching at home, God loves what he made in you. So, ladies, I went too far. Okay. Can I help you? Don't rock no, the boat, can. baby. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie. So, I want to ask you, ladies, right? We want to ask mm -hmm. them, how is your peace? If we went around today and took a poll, how, how would your peace in Christ Jesus be on a scale from 1 to 10? Our desire as women's ministry and as a body of Christ is that you would truly live with the peace that passes all 
human understanding. Amen? But um, before we get into peace through living in his word, we have to understand two very important words. Now, I'm going to give you the simplest definition of these words because I like to keep it real simple. Do you? So we got to wrap our minds around these two words. And, and the first word is I-N, in. We've mm -hmm. got to learn what that means. A simple definition means of in is something that appears to be enclosed or surrounded by something. So something that appears to be enclosed or surrounded by something. So when you're in Christ Jesus, then that means we are enclosed and surrounded by him. Amen? Amen. And you have to be in. And the second thing is process, right? Process is an important word for us. And um, process, simplest definition, means a course of action to achieve a result. A course of action to achieve a result. And so as we let his word live in us, we can expect he will make us whole. See, that's the process. So before we can apply any of God's principles, in this great, great, great book, we have to be one in Christ Jesus. You have to accept him as Lord and Savior. We have to stay in his word, his living word, and we have to be submitted to his process in us. Amen? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so today we're going to talk about the peace that comes from living in his word. That is what we're going to talk about, living in him, because Jesus is the living word. This Bible, everybody knows, if you got your Bible, go ahead and just hold it. If you got your phone, whatever, because this Bible is a book of wholeness. Did you know that? No, this, these words will make you whole, because they're God's mm -hmm. words. Yeah, yeah. This is a book of wholeness. And when this word is living in us, we will become whole. And we will have peace, right? Amen? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to break it down real simple because I want everybody to follow what I'm saying. When we become saved, and I pray everybody in this room is, and I pray you are online. If not, you will have the opportunity to be prayed with and accept the Lord if you would like. We would love to do that with you today. And if online, you would like to accept or watching at home, if you would like to accept the Lord, then um, there's a place where you can connect with us, and we will get back with you, and we would love to do that with you also. So first, like when the process starts, when we become saved, who knows when you become saved, it started God's loving process of wholeness in us. See, that's what happened. He came in, and the process of loving wholeness started, right? So Philippians 2, 12, and God gave me that last night. I did not pick that, but mm -hmm. who knows what today's date is? 2, 12. 2, 12. I didn't even realize that till I wrote it. And I was like, look at the Lord, but he knows timing, right? So Philippians 2, 12, um, that is up. It says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And we're going to go ahead and add 13 to it, Philippians 2.13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So I just want to explain that a little bit to you. It says, first of all, I want everybody in here to understand. It says to work out your, to work out your salvation, not work for your salvation. Amen. Big, 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 big difference. We work out our salvation. We don't work for it. That's a free gift. Amen? Amen? Amen. So what does this mean? It means that the free gift that God has given us of Jesus is now living on the inside of us, right? And through faith in him, as we partner with his work, because his beautiful spirit is working with all the stuff, all the garbage, all the junk that was already in there. 
So as we partner with him in that process, we work out, we press out what doesn't belong in, in us. So we become more and more, look, we become to look more and more like him from glory to glory to glory. So is everybody following me? And mm -hmm. that is a process that we take by faith. So this is a life process, a process of faith, that now the one who lives in us has control to work through all the stuff that don't belong and press it out, work it out. Amen? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we are working out in us what doesn't belong because of faith and obedience to the one who is now ruling and living in us. So can everybody say amen? Yes, amen. So just to get that back in line, first we have to ask Jesus into our heart. That's the first part of being in. We have to ask Jesus into our heart as Savior. Two, we have to be in his word, looking for his help, answers, and comfort. We can't find what we don't look for. So when we're anxious, sad, depressed, fearful, hurting, sorrowful, anything right here is where we need to get in. We need to be in this and let it speak to us. So my question is, are you in? Are you in? Are you in Christ Jesus? And are you in his living word? In Jesus, in his word, because you will have peace and in his process. So are you allowing the Holy Spirit to transform you? Where are you in his process? Where, if you're watching at home, think about that. Where are you in God's process? And it made me ask questions like this. Are you being obedient to his process? And have you taken back control of that process? Or have you simply stopped the process because see the process of growing whole will last until we're finished now real quick I forgot something very very important I love that part that says um, in the prior scripture where it says we work out our salvation with fear and trembling now a lot of people you might have told you and taught you that um, whoo you better be scared because if you're not you don't get it right mm hmm then you might not be in salvation, right? You better be scared. You better watch what you're doing. You better be scared and get it right. You better stay on your toes. But I, I perceive in my spirit that what that is about is the fear and trembling comes from letting go, from giving up your own control. Because, see, when God comes in, he's going to work it out, and he's going to have to take control to do that. And, and I don't know about you, but, hey, it's a little scary when you let somebody else lead. It's a little scary when you let somebody else rule. It's a little scary when you stop trying to do things in your own strength and you let someone else rule your lifestyle and change your habits. So I want to encourage you today. You don't got to be perfect. You just got to let go and Amen. surrender to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so where are you in the process? Don't stop the process of God making you whole. No matter how long you've been in the Lord. Oh, you're not there yet. Amen? You're not there yet. We won't be there until we see him. Till we get face there. Face to face. Till we get there. <laughs> Till we get there, Sister Box. Okay. So, I, now we can get to what I really want to look, look at as women today. <laughs> Amen? Let's look at the process of receiving. That's it. So, I had to get all that face out for you so you know in the process so now we're going to look at the process of receiving God's peace that passes all understanding. Because that is what is told we can have. So we're going to look at the process of receiving God's peace that passes all understanding. So if you'll put up Philippians 4, 6 through 7, I want you to meditate, eat, digest, and think this scripture. Every day, if you have to, to you get what this is saying down in you. Amen? Amen. Okay, so I'm going to read it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace.
peace experience, see, mm -hmm. which exceeds anything we can understand, passes human understanding. Then his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you what? Live in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So that's a good word, right? So if we want this peace that passes any human understanding, then we got to do what this word tells us to do. Amen? And it's simple as that. And what's the first thing it says do? Don't worry. It doesn't say you can worry if you want to. <laughs> no, it's actually a command. It says don't worry. So now you're probably thinking, well, that's easy for you to say. Maybe you don't got the worries I got. Well, I got my own. But I have chose to transform my mind in that area. See, we have to catch ourselves. And this is what I want to say to anybody here today or watching at your home. Um, if you're prone to anxiety and worry, you're going to have to start a pattern of catching yourself. And when you catch yourself doing that, say, stop. No, I'm not going to focus on what's causing me to worry. I'm going to focus on I have a God who is able. I have a God who brings me into victory. I have a God who will take care of me. So he tells us, can you put my scripture back up? <laughs> These sweet guys in the back. They are so awesome, y'all. Okay, so, um, so don't worry about anything. What did it say worry about? Nothing. Amen. Amen. And if you struggle with that, then start to practice this. The minute the worry comes on, instead he says, pray, right? Pray. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. God mm -hmm. knows everything. He knows what you're thinking. God knows if you're mad at somebody. If you want to get that off your chest, you just go to God and say, Lord, you know I'm mad right now. You know my sister made me so mad, Lord. You know she made me mad. And just tell <laughs> God everything. And then guess what God's going to tell you? I know. Now just forgive her. And let me work in your heart. Show you how you can love her through that. See, God will have an answer. But whatever it is, and there's bigger things than that that cause anxiety. I'm not saying that. But whatever is bothering you, go to God and pray in truth. In truth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. See, worry causes us to forget. But when we focus and jerk our minds back, you've got to practice jerking your mind back to what God says is true. And, and with God, he's going to work that out. So pray, tell him the truth, tell him what you need. And I wrote down a few things that, you know, just to help you understand what that might look like. Help me be willing to change. Lord, you know I don't want to. I tell God that all the time. Oh, Jesus, I need you to make me willing to be willing. I am willing to let you make me be willing. So if you've got to say that, say that. But start. Pray, right? And then... Sometimes we simply, and, and, and I think of my, my sister Ashley here, and, and I, I think of the death of my brother, and, and, and maybe some of you have lost loved ones. And, 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 you know, sometimes we simply have to ask him, why this, Lord? Why did this have to happen? It's okay to ask him. He will give you peace about it. He will help you understand it. Amen. And um, show me the why, Lord, so I can understand and sometimes we simply have to tell him, Lord, I can't take the sadness I'm feeling. We mm -hmm. have to be honest with him and just tell him, but I can't. I cannot take the sadness of the situation. Lord, I'm going to give it to you. He will come in. He will come in. Yeah. Lord, I can't take the fear that's coming on me right now. I can't take thinking about what the news is saying and what social media is saying, what the magazines are saying. Help me. Be honest with him. Because he knows what you're going through already. Be honest with him. Lord, I'm weak. My flesh is weak, Lord. Amen. But his spirit is willing and strong. Right? So every time we're tempted to worry, start praying. And be thankful. My scripture keeps going off. <laughs> you lying, devil. Okay. And then um, in number four is... Be thankful, right? Like, see, a million little miracles. Be yeah. thankful. Guess what you're doing when, you're, when you be thankful? It, you're remembering the goodness of God over your life. Yeah. 
-hmm. And everybody has so much to tell, amen? Mm -hmm. And I know at home you've got so much to tell too. Be thankful. And if you're having a hard time being thankful, this is what I've been telling everybody. Get out a piece of paper, tape it onto your wall, and start writing one. Tomorrow will be one. Write something you're thankful for and do it all year till you've got 365 reasons on that piece of paper why you're thankful. But every day, if you, if you, don't, you can't practice thankfulness on your own, then you get something that will help you do it. And you start practicing how thankful you are. You will be amazed how it changes your life. And not because I'm telling you to, but because he is telling us to. So be thankful, right? Because we're remembering his ability to bring you into victory. Now, here is something that God showed us in prayer last Monday. And I just want you to hear this. See, we got to focus and pray so we can remember his ability to bring us into victory. But, ladies... Victory doesn't always look good in the flesh, does it? Mm -hmm. Victory don't always look right in the eyes of the world. Because we were talking about our brother Ricky and, you know, he's had an amputated leg. Well, the world might not say that is victory. But in Christ Jesus, we know we got the victory, right? Because he is still here. And I'm going to tell you right now, the um, maybe things in your life, According to the world standards, it might not look like victory. But you got to see the victory through the eyes of Jesus. And that's why you got to stay in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus on the cross, dying, nailed, bloody, broke, beaten, and bruised, did not look like victory either. But it was the greatest victory for us. Amen? <laughs> so remember that. See the Amen. victory in Jesus. So now, when you do these things, then we are told we will be guarded by the peace that passes human understanding. So when you do these things, choose not to worry. Replace it with prayer. Be thankful. Remember God's goodness and pray. Then, then we are guaranteed the peace that no human being can bring us will guard our hearts and our minds. And now I believe that what that's really saying, this is what God put on my heart. He said, guard your heart and mind, because then when you do these things, when you're obedient, then your heart, which represents any sorrow you'll go through, peace will guard you from the sorrow of your sorrows. His peace will guard you then in any sorrow. I think that's what the heart represents. And when you do these things, his peace will guard you from any fear that tries to come in your mind. And I think that's why he used mm -hmm. heart and mind. Because he said, my peace is greater than any sorrow you'll ever experience and greater than any fear that will ever try to come against you. Amen? Because his ways are greater than any human understanding. And finally, all of this peace is found, and I, I, that's why I just really reiterated the word in, because all of his peace, ladies, if you want this peace, it can only be found it's tied together. After we do these things, we receive what he gives us. Then what does he tell us? As you live in Christ Jesus. So we have to stay in his word and in his process of working out our salvation and wholeness. See, these are things we're told to do. So, and um, I like to say it like this. We need his reading the Bible and praying kind of peace. Amen. <laughs> is reading the Bible and praying kind of peace. Now, I stole that from Brother um, Dave because at one of our meetings, he said, well, we, the world needs the knowledge right now. He's reading the Bible and praying kind of knowledge. Amen? <laughs> and we do. But guess what? We need his reading the Bible and praying kind of peace right now too. Amen? And if you want that, then you do these things. So today and at home, if you're here and at home, are you in Christ Jesus? Make sure you're in. Make sure he is the Savior and the Lord of your life. And again, if you want to pray and receive him today, if you're here, we will gladly do that. Online, we will gladly. I keep saying online, but I want to say at home. Uh, we will gladly connect with you. You can connect with us. Um, there's a website on our page. Mm -hmm. You can connect. We will get back with you promptly. We want to be part of your life. God sees you right where you're at. So are you in Christ Jesus? 
And if you want the peace that passes human understanding that God gives, are you in his word? Because see, that will bring that peace. And are you still in the process of submitting your ways to his ways? If yes, then you should have the peace, all the wonderful peace that passes human understanding that you can contain. If not, then today is the day you get to check yourself, amen? And we want to pray with you today after this. And if you're watching at home, you can shoot us an email. We will pray with you. We want to pray with you about these things because his word for your answers and your solutions are found right here, right? So if you're, if you're not, if you're not in the word looking for his peace, well, I got great news. You know what the great news is? You can repent today. <laughs> you can repent for searching out solutions and answers to your life other than through his word. Just simply repent and get back in the word, right? We just need to practice not allowing worry to take our mind. If you don't have the peace of Christ that passes all understanding, well, maybe it's because you're letting worry rule. Then start today. Repent and practice letting the word take over, letting his goodness take over, letting prayer take over. Amen? Amen. Right? And just pray in a real way. Some, some translations say, in prayer and supplication. And that means if you have to, get on your knees. You might have to get on your knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I stopped the process with you. Please forgive me. I want to be made whole. Let me take the word back in me. Let me get back in the word. Let me start praying like I should. Let me start thinking like I should. So practice replacing worry with focusing on God's strength. And practice being thankful. Oh, we're such a blessed people. Nobody in here is hungry. Nobody in here don't, there's nobody in here that doesn't have a place to sleep, right? We are blessed people. Get your list up, your 365 a day list. I'm going to start one tomorrow. I encourage you to, too, and I encourage you online. So if you need to get back in your process of allowing God to work out what doesn't belong in you, then do that. Don't stop the process. Let him make you whole. Let him continuously make you whole. So, Dawn, that is how we are going to concentrate as a woman um, receiving the peace that passes all understanding in Christ Jesus. We're going to live in him. We're going to dwell in his word. And we're going to live in his process. Amen? Amen. 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 And that's what we're going to concentrate on this year. And now, sweet ladies... Um, your job will to be take the scripture home, meditate on it, pray on it, and let God show you that peace that passes understanding for yourself. And again, we're happy to pray with you at the end for any of this. But now we're going to let the Sister Box tell us, as the women have received this, the peace at living in his word and the peace of healthy self-love, we're going to let Dawn share a little bit about the peace that God has said is for the whole body. Not that what I shared is not for the whole body, but Sister Box. <laughs> well, thanks, Paulette. I'm, I'm going to start my list today by being thankful that God has brought this sweet, sweet woman of God into my life. And uh, just the encouragement that she is. Amen to, I'm sure, all of you, definitely to me. And so I'm so thankful for you. So that's starting my list off, that Hallelujah. gift of encouragement of our Lord that comes through you so sweetly. I love it. Um, so I'm going to share real quick. I'm going to change up uh, what I have just so I can summarize it because I think you guys got a full um, word from the Lord through our sister here, right? Amen? I hope you take that to heart and, and don't think, oh, I've heard this before. You know, this is something I know I hear all the time, but no, like she said earlier, you know, each season, God's going to emphasize something in it for you. And so I, I pray you take it to heart in this season in your life and ask God, what do you want me to see? What do you want to emphasize in this word for me in this season? Yeah. Um, he always wants to draw us closer and even closer and even closer still. Amen. 
Um, I love that we didn't talk. I wasn't at her, the prayer meeting or anything, but I love how when you're in his word, it's one spirit and the spirit speaks one word. Um, as far as the word for, that God has put on my husband's heart for the church is living in light of his coming. As he started that series through the book of Second Peter, he's going to continue on with that after tomorrow. We have a guest speaker tomorrow, but after tomorrow, he'll continue on with that uh, series. And we just, as a teaching team got together and prayed, we just all bore witness with that's definitely where we feel like God is leading us this year and wanting to show us this year is how to live in light of his coming. The word uh, personally that God had given to me for this year uh, was peace, and specifically that verse from um, uh, Colossians 3.15 that says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts and your minds. Um, since we are members of one body, we were called to peace and to be thankful. Um, I just kind of uh, confirms the word that Paulette gave us. That's Colossians 3.15. Um, let the peace of God rule in our heart and our mind. The, and just to summarize um, some of the things that I felt like God put on my heart, and, it, of course, and of course, you know, in the middle of the night, he changed it up for me as well and, and wanted to focus. I felt like the word was John, uh, not Colossians, but John uh, chapter 14. Um, and John chapter 14, how many of you like to go to the back of a book and read the back, the ending first? Before you go, anyone? Is it just me? It's like, okay, I want to know what's going on here. What, what are you leading me to, right? <laughs> um, so I'm going to just take you to the, back, to the end of this chapter really quick. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to be quick. So um, don't worry if you're already getting uncomfortable. It won't be long. But um, the end of chapter four, <laughs> you hope it won't be long or you hope they're not getting uncomfortable? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I love it's Paula. Be good, y'all. <laughs> Um, so John 14, 27 says, this is Jesus talking to his disciples that he had just informed the disciples that he was going to be going away. He had just informed the disciples that somebody among them has betrayed him. Um, the disciples world right now just kind of got turned upside down. They've been following Jesus this whole time. What are we going to do without Jesus here? And uh, so they're troubled basically is, is the word he uses, so I'll just use the same word. They're troubled, and Jesus says, to, this is what Jesus says to them in the midst of their turmoil. He says in uh, John 14, 27, he says this, peace I leave with you. Amen. My peace I give to you. Amen. Not as the world gives do I give. Not the peace that you're going to read in that Vogue magazine. Amen. Um, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Mm. Trust in me, believe in me. Um, you have heard me say to you that I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father for my Father is greater than I. And I, now I have told you before it comes when it, so that when it comes to pass, you may believe but that the world may know that I love the Father, and, the, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I give to you. I give the commandment to you. And then he says, arise and let's go. But just to summarize um, this chapter, and he ended with that, now my peace I give to you. So why did he end this chapter with that? Because in this chapter, he was telling them, he was giving them uh, laying the foundation for them to be able to walk in this peace that he's giving them. He's laying the foundation for them to be able to receive the peace that he wants to give to them. So in this chapter, I'm not going to read it, um, but you can go back and read it if you like, but this is the chapter where Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Um, he starts off the chapter with saying this, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, or many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If it, um, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, 
that where I am, you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Um, and so he goes on. First of all, he says, let not your heart be troubled. And in the midst of this turmoil, he comforts them. He doesn't say, come on, stop worrying about it, move on. Let's, you know. No, he meets them right where they're at. And as she was talking about, we need to know our identity. We need to know how to love ourselves and who God created us to be so that we can love others as we love ourselves. We can only love others as much as we love who God created us to be, right? Um, the more that we um, love God, the more we will love his creation, which is us, the more we will be able to love um, others as he called us to, so the more that others will be able, will be brought, um, we will be able to participate in bringing to him. Amen. So he comforts them. He says, I know you're troubled. I know. I see you. I see what you're going through, right? He gets right where they are. I see you. Um, it may not even be the things of the world. I mean, there's so many things in the world that are going on, but it might be something within your own home. It might be something within your own heart. God says, I see you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Whatever it is, neither let it be afraid. He comforts them, and then he goes on and he assures them. And he says, let me assure you of this. If I say I'm going, I'm going to come back. And when I'm going, I'm preparing a place for you. And he reassures them of who they are. You're mine. Um, you're my children, and I'm coming back. Just like a parent would, right? Um, when you're going through trouble, who do you go to? That, that parent, right? The one, who, the one who raised you, the one who knows you, whether it's a grandmother or an older sibling, or if your parents aren't here, so maybe it's a spouse or a, a good friend, but who do you go to? Um, and what are you expecting when you go to them? You want them to, first of all, sympathize with you, right? <laughs> and then you're looking for a word of assurance that you're not crazy, <laughs> that it's going to be okay, right? Um, and that's just, that's just what our Heavenly Father does. And then maybe there's a way they can help, um, and that's just what he does. And, and in here he says, um, in verse 15, he says, if you love me, um, keep my commandments, um, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, um, he gives us help with his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also called what? The comforter, right? The comforter, and that word comforter means somebody who comes along and, and strengthens you, gives you strength in the midst of it. So it's comfort, it's strength, and so he... Um, provides the helper to help comfort them, and then he provides guidance for them. But I want to just, just for a minute, I want to talk about this comforter and this guidance because he says, talking about love, if you love me, part of that peace is obeying his commandments. Amen? Amen. How many of you think about constant obedience to the will of God and feel overwhelmed? <laughs> I can't do it, I don't feel, and, and especially as women, I mean, we're so driven by our emotions and our feelings, it's so easy to say, oh, I don't feel like it right now, God. I know I should be getting up at five o'clock in the morning and spending an hour in your, I don't feel like it right now, right? I know I should do this, I don't feel like, I know I should go talk to that person, but I'm embarrassed, I don't know what to say, or they're gonna think I'm crazy, or I just don't feel like talking to anybody right now. I've had my own bad day. Um, but God knows already. God knows. He, does, he knows that we cannot follow all of his commandments. He knows that we cannot always be in obedience to his will. He knew that ahead of time. That's why Jesus came, right? That's why he gave us the law to show us we can't do it all the time, right? Because we need a savior. And so Jesus came. And Jesus said, I'm going, but I'm not leaving you alone. He assures them, you're not going to be alone. I'm going to bring you a helper. This helper is going to dwell with you. He's going to dwell within you. And he is going to help you in all of, in following my will, in being obedient. Amen? So as we yield to him, that obedience um, will come 
the more that we draw close to him. Because we love and we um, obey, we obey those commandments because we love him, right? If you love me, you will obey my commands. So we don't need to concentrate on the obeying, we need to concentrate on the loving. The more we love, the more natural that obeying comes because we want to. Um, it becomes part of who we are. Um, but he will bring the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him and he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And so he has that, that assurance. He has that helper that he sends us. And then he says, um, uh, and then he gives them guidance. Just as we would expect from our heavenly father, he gives them guidance. And he says, um, part of the guidance is to follow his commands. That's part of it. Um, he reminds them with the Holy Spirit in you, you'll be able to do that as you love you love me. Uh, that's your focus. That will help you to do that as well. Follow his commands. And then, he's, and then he says here at the end, as we've already read, he says, when he says, now my peace I leave with you. Walk in my peace. Remember these things that I've said to you. And at the end of the chapter, he says this. Arise, let us go. Arise, let us go. I know the... Um, the vision of the women's ministry is to arise yeah. in, in health and multiply in wholeness yeah. in Christ, right? Um, good, arise, let's go. Yeah. And then they arise and go, and next chapter is John chapter 15. I'm sure familiar to you. John chapter 15 about the vine and the branches, and what's it about? Abiding in him. Oh. What did our sister here just give you that word about? Abiding in him. Abiding in him, and as you abide in him, that peace, that gift that he wants to give you, that's where it's at. That's where you'll find it. He has that gift of peace to you. My peace I give to you. Where do you find it? In him. Mm, that's good. Amen? That's good. In him. I want to leave you just with a couple scriptures about peace. One of my favorites, Isaiah 26, 3, says this. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Yes. In the midst of our turmoil, so many times we have those woulda, coulda, shoulda thoughts, right? Oh, I should have done this. Oh, if only I could have done that. Or if only this would have happened differently. All those, all those thoughts just start to overwhelm us. But God says, he will keep you in perfect peace, him whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Mm. Um, we just read the John 14 one. Uh, John 16, 33 says this, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, tribulation but take heart or be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Um, Romans 5, 1 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we have peace with God? Not anything we could do, right? No, we have peace uh, with God through Jesus. Amen. Um, all right. So God wants us to have peace. She talked about having peace in our mind and in our heart. Well, you know, our, he wants us to have peace in the depths of our soul. Yes. Our soul is made up of our mind, our heart, and our will. And those three areas, your mind, let the peace of God rule in your heart and in your mind, yes. in our heart where our emotions are, let the peace of God rule in there and in our will, right? Um, our will is obeying his commands. And how do we let the peace of God rule in there? We abide in him and we call on the Holy Spirit. We, yes. we surrender to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that's how the peace of God can also rule in our will. So let the peace of God rule in the depths of your soul. There's so much to this peace. We're going to be hearing about it. Um, there's so many different areas of peace to get into. We, didn't, we haven't even talked about just the peace of having that good conscience. Um, but in all of those things, God says, this is my gift to you. Hallelujah. 
not as the world gives, but as I give. Um, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Um, and then I want to just leave you with this last blessing because it talks about God's peace. And I know you've heard it. We've been, there's a song out recently that, that talks about it. But Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. peace. Amen. Amen. So Ms. Melba, run up here real quick. So we want to end up, we want to go out like this with, a, as our brother Jesse Gomez would say, with a song in our heart. <laughs> Amen. So um, we're going to have Miss Melba sing us out, and um, then I'm going to pray over you, and then we can just fellowship and enjoy God's blessings here today, here today in each other. Amen? I need you ladies to remember Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Again I say rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, again I say, and again I say, again I say rejoice. So ladies. Just like Miss Melba said, if you have to do it again, then do it again. Rejoice again. Just do it again. Just keep on. Just rejoice in the Lord always. And I love Sister Box's word. So let us ar arise. Let us go. Amen. Arise. Let us go in his peace. And once again, we just send you out with that blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. you. You guys watching at home, may the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Arise. Let us go out in peace. Amen. <laughs>